so before we're going to move, we are we're going to going to move into talking about the levels of relationship with Jesus. I want to take a little time to talk about who Jesus is, because it's paramount. There are those that I'm coming here, even those that are in the Christian faith. There was a young man I invited to this program today, but he didn't come. But he doesn't believe that Jesus is God. He's a Christian. Saying so their church they don't believe that Jesus is God. This is a Christian. How much more people on the other side, like the Muslims, who say he's just a prophet. Then he's just the son of God. He's not God. This is a Christian. So there are a lot of evil out there that Satan has done to many people. And because of the wrong conception about who Jesus is, many are stumbling and many are going to hell on a daily basis. So it's paramount. It's key. If I don't know who you are, how do I desire a relationship with you? If I don't get to know who you are, how do I yearn? How do I desire that you know, you are worth having a relationship with. So that's the problem. So you understand what the devil does to these people. By the time he mars the understanding of who Jesus is, you will not be able to desire a relationship with him. And even when you desire, it won't be a meaningful relationship, not based on who he is. If I am, a, for instance, the president of this country, Donald Trump, let's say I don't know he's the president of the United States of America. I don't know that. I don't know who the president of the United States of America is. And I meet him somewhere, probably uh, at a club or whatever, at a party or maybe in Africa, anywhere. I may not even desire to know him at all. Or to have any I may even ignore him, just go my way. And if I know he's the president of the United States and the opportunity is there for me to meet him like that, oh, what a great day. I would like to know who this man is. Oh, Paul, you're the president of the United States? Hi, what's going on? You know, I would like to know him, right? Because I know he's the president of the United States. This is how relationships are built. So when the devil succeeds in, in, in our work, or is giving you the wrong information of who Jesus is, it's a huge problem. It's practically impossible to have a meaningful relationship with Jesus. So uh, why I'm saying this is so that we understand why the devil is doing this. Why he did it with the Muslim faith. Why he's doing it even in the Christendom. Making people, to giving people a different knowledge or attacking the person of who Jesus really is. Now, Jesus Christ is the living God. Jesus Christ is the living God. He is the living word of God, the creator of heaven and the earth, and the giver of eternal life. This is who Jesus is. Jesus is the living God. He is the living word of God, the creator of heaven and the earth, and the giver of eternal life. I have a business associate. He's a Muslim, and uh, he comes to my place, and uh I try to, you know, we talk, talk about God with him, and uh, we still talk, we just do chat over the phone, WhatsApp, and everything. But his problem, he's a Muslim. His problem is that Jesus is not God. He said, if you can show me where that Jesus said he is God, or prove to me that Jesus is God, then I will convert to Christianity today. The problem is that he's not sincere. Not that it's the lack of evidence. That's the problem with many people. It's not the lack of evidence, it's the lack of evidence is the lack of sincerity. They're not really sincere in their statements. And so no matter how you present evidence to them, they don't play it. No matter how you present, how the evidence is clear, they, they not say, no, that, that, that's, that's not what they say. They now, when I present evidence of God, of Jesus being God to him, he said, no, the Bible has been adulterated. That's not, <laughs> you see, he's not sincere. So, no, that's not the original, that's not the original Bible. I said, okay, go and check out the original Bible so that we can, I can show you from the original Bible that is there. The Bible said, you shall know God. You will find God when you seek him with all your heart, with all your, uh, with all your strength and with all your might. So if you're really sincere to know who God is, know who Jesus is, that if you really find out that he is God, you will believe, you will go and search him out. You will search it at any way. You will dig for this truth yourself until you find it. But the problem is that they're not sincere. He's not really interested in that. He's just making vain and empty arguments. But I'm going to talk about it. Even the Quran itself, tells them that Jesus is God. The Quran itself boldly says in black and white, clear print, that Jesus is God. Follow him. The problem is, see, Satan doesn't deceive you without presenting the truth to you. First of all, he presents the truth and then misinterprets the truth. Why do you think he does that? So I can pin it on you. But no, I, I showed him the truth. He's the one who made that choice. I, I, he knew this, this, the truth was there, it was clear. But he made the choice to do what he chose to do. So I can pin it on your back. And so you'll be guiltless. So you'll not be guiltless, what I mean. So, the Quran boldly says that Jesus is God. Very clearly. 
in plain sight. So he don't even need another book or any Bible, or anything to show him that Jesus is God, because it's clearly stated in the Quran. But the only thing after stating that Jesus is God in the Quran, he now interprets it in the way to deceive them that Jesus is just a prophet. But the truth is there. Just like I present this phone to you, I tell you that this phone, you can see the color of this phone. This phone, they say it's a black phone. And I will now try to misinterpret it that this phone is not black. It's not actually black because there are some lines on it. So you, it's not black, it's gray. And I deceive you. But in your eyes, you're seeing that it's black. Why do you believe me telling that this phone is gray? That's exactly what the devil does. When he took Jesus to the mountain in Matthew chapter 4, he said, look, it is written in the Bible, jump. I will give his angel charge over you. Is that not the word of God? Aha! Uh -huh. If he doesn't quote the word, if he doesn't bring the word that is truth, that's the true word of God. What did he do with the word? He misinterpreted it. He misapplied it so that Jesus can fall for it. When he came to the Garden of Eden and met Adam and Eve, was it not the word of God he presented to them? Did God really say that the day you eat this food you shall die? He did not deny that God said that. Satan will never deny that. He will never deny God because the Bible even states that he's a believer also of God and they tremble. So he will always present the truth to you, but what he does is he misinterprets it. So they can damn your soul. So he does that, he did that with Adam and Eve, and they fell. And today we are suffering the consequences. Now the Quran says that Jesus is the word of God. I mean, I have my Muslim brother who is here. If I lie, he can please call me out. The Quran clearly says that Jesus is the word of God. And I want to ask you, as a human being here, are you different from your word? No one is different from your word. Your word is you. That's why you can be killed for your word. That's why you can go to jail for your word. Your word is exactly who you are. Your word was born with you the day you were born. Your word was not created by you. You have the word in you. You can ability to speak. It comes out from the abundance of the heart. The man what? Speaks. Your word is exactly who you are. You are one with your word. So have you seen how Quran first of all puts that Jesus is God in plain sight? If he says he is the word of God, is the word of God, if your word is the same with you, is the word of God now different from God himself? No. Is the word of God now less than God himself? No. In plain sight, telling you, even in the Quran, that Jesus is God. And that thing, which is, you can see it in the say, Kalimatullah. Jesus is, is the word of God. Also in Quran, he said, Rukunlah. Jesus is the spirit of God. Are you less than your spirit, or is your spirit less than you? Is there anyone who is less than his spirit here? You and your spirit are one. You and your spirit, you are the same. So if Quran clearly admits that Jesus is the spirit of God, what is it telling you? Jesus is God. In plain sight, in your own plain sight, Jesus is God. But it comes down and tells you, no, 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 he's just a prophet. After presenting the truth physically so you can see it. And then now, why do you leave the truth that you can see and go to that which is false? So you can, so can put it on your back. So it can, be, it can be your problem. I show them the truth. They are, that is their choice. I told them that you are God. When I told them that you were the word of God, are you not the word of God? When I told them you were the spirit of God, is the spirit less than the man? Are you not the same? Very clear. But he went also down and told them, no, he's just a prophet. And ignorance is killing many people. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Now also in chapter 10, verse 94 of Quran, I'm not saying this to exalt Quran. I'm not saying this to, 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 what I call it, to validate Quran. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this to point out to us that even this truth is there. In your common knowledge, in your understanding, your common reasoning, in your simple reasoning as a human being, you can deduct this truth without any further analysis, without any further digging into the scriptures or into anything. It's very clear. It's very there. It's in plain sight. Now, we all know that my spirit is not different from me. My word is not different from me. I am my word. If whatever I say to the people who hold me accountable for it, I can lose my job for it, I can die for it, I can go to jail for it, I can suffer any harm up to death because of my word. My spirit is definitely who I am. I am not any different. But how is now when it comes to Jesus? Oh, when it, when it comes to God, God what, God's word is different from God, and God's spirit is different from God. And the, the, this one is less. This one is no longer God. This one is now... A prophet, the deception of Satan. In, Quran, in um, Quran chapter 19, I mean chapter 10, verse 94, it says, If you doubt this Quran that I have given to you, go and read the Bible or ask the people that read the Bible. The truth is already revealed there. That is what Quran says. Satan is clever. 
said, if you doubt this Quran that I have given you, say, go and read the Bible or ask the people that read the Bible, the truth is already revealed in there. If the truth is revealed in there, what are you doing with one that is not of the truth? Now, very clever. They are showing you where the truth is. I said, no, no. God, I showed them where the, they just refused to go. I showed them that the truth is in the Bible and with the people that read the Bible. But they just chose on their own not to go. It was their choice. It was they made that choice themselves. The clever, the smartness, the wise of Satan. He's tricky. He said, if you doubt this Quran, go and read the Bible or ask the people that read the Bible. The truth is already revealed in it. Now, let us read the Bible. And hear from the one who reads the Bible. Let us go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Um, I read verses 26 um, to 20, probably 7. 26 and 27. And God said, Let us make man in our own in, in, so in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, God created him. Male and female created he them. Now God said, let us Create man in our own image. This is God speaking. Now the question is, who is God speaking to? We're going to understand this by the scriptures. God was speaking to himself, speaking to the personalities in the Trinity. Now I have that go confuse the world. Is God three? No, no, no. We are not three. We are one. I'm one person. But yet I have my soul, I have my body, I have my spirit. And sometimes I do speak to my soul. I do speak to my spirit to encourage the person. Now we can see that. Um, David doing the same thing in the scriptures. Speaking to me, let's go to Psalm to portray that. Psalm chapter 42. Psalm chapter 42, verse 5. Psalms 42, verse 5. And it says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Now, this is David, you know, speaking to his soul. Show that he's more than one person, separate beings. But is David two people? Is David three people? No, David is still one person. But that one person is made up of the spirit, the soul, and the body. Now, so for you to understand, when God said, come, let us make man in our own image. In our likeness, God made man. When you see that, when you come also to that Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, is where we read, he said, when you come to verse 28, so God created man in his, he said, let, come, let us make man at the beginning. He said, come, let us make man. But when he created him, he said, he created them in his image, not in our image. Started with us, but created man in his image. Though it's us, but it's one God. Though it's created us in our own, create man in our own image, but it's one God. And in his singular image now, God created man. And woman in the image of God. So now that doesn't make it hard for us to, with that, it makes it easier for us to understand the nature of God. So when we say there is God, the Father, God, the Holy Spirit, or God, the Word, or God, the, uh, the Holy Spirit, we shouldn't be confused. He's the same God. Oh, Cliff, the body, the one you can see. Oh, Cliff, his spirit, the one you cannot see. Cliff, his soul, the one you cannot see. He's still the same Cliff. I've not changed. He's still one person. And when you are any of them, you see, you see one person, you're going to be seen. So that's that understanding. And then if we also look at, to understand the, the, the nature of man, uh, let us also see the first, first Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Uh, first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And it says, And the very God of peace sanctify, your whole, sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, spirit, your whole soul, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Speaking to the three nations of man, that your whole spirit, soul, 
and body be sanctified and kept holy at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you now praying? Yeah. Sure one. So what is confusing when it comes to God is Satan deceiving people, causing people to know or to misinterpret who God is so that they can damn their soul. If you can understand it with yourself that your spirit, soul, and body, and yet you are one person, how come it's hard to understand that God is God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit, and yet it's one God? What makes it difficult? The devil is in that business. Now, let us also look at, to portray this fact a little bit more, let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Chapter 2, um, two um, Hebrews 4, 12, brother. Hebrews 4, 2. We're going to move. Hebrews 4, 12. And it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Let me end it there. The fact I want to bring out there that the word of God is able to divide the soul and the spirit is neatly knit together. For man, the Bible, when God created man, wounded man out of doors, and God breathed the his spirit into man, and man became what? A living soul. Who you are, you are really a living soul, living in a body. You did not become a living body, but you became a living soul. The breath of God created the life in you, the living soul, which we come to God tomorrow or at the end of our lives and account to God. It's not the breath of God. So the soul and the spirit is neatly knit together. Oh, that oftentimes you refer to the soul as the spirit as the same thing as the soul, the spirit, the same person you're talking about. Most of them neatly jo joined together. But say that the word of God is able to divide them and separate them because they are two separate things. So you understand how God is three persons in one, but yet we have one God. Now let's move from here. Although God is three persons, just like man is, he's, so just like man, he is still one. So let's verify that with the scriptures also and see if the Bible, remember, uh, the Quran says, if you doubt this truth, well, it's not the truth, if you doubt the Quran, say, go and ask the people that read the Bible. So let's search now. What we're trying to do, we're trying to confirm from the word of God to see if, you know, God is, Jesus is God. And if, is there three gods or is one God? But well, they claim, oh, it's only one God. The Bible does not teach that there are three gods, but one God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord your God, thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. How many Lord are the Lord our God? One. Just like there is one of you. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 and 5. One God. Let us also go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Read verse 7. It says, For there are three that bears record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. There are three that bears record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So if the Quran plainly tells you that Jesus is the Word of God, what is he telling you? That Jesus is God. It's clear. But he comes down just as being who he is to deceive you so you can believe the wrong thing. Why after giving you the evidence so that you can be damned and have no excuse? So, now he said, there are three that bear witness, the Father. The Spirit, just like as you ask a man, there are three that bear witness of all that you do. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. And these three are one. There's one of you. So there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Holy, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. They're not separable. We have one God, Jehovah, the Almighty our creator, and his name is Jesus. So, Jesus is the living word of God. The creator of the heavens and the earth. Now, let us look at Hebrew. We say that Jesus is the living word of God. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Let us look at the book of Hebrew, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I read um, verse 3. 
It says, through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So that things which are not seen, which are which were, which sorry, things which are seen were not made of things which are which do not appear. So like things which are seen were not made of things which do not appear. So, so by faith we know that the world was created by the word. Even Quran tells you that the world was created by the word. And yet God is the creator of the world, which you affirm. Isn't the Quran telling you that Jesus is God? He says that God created the world. But the world in Quran also states it that God, the world, was created by the word of God. Telling you that the creator is God. I am not different from my word as we have learned. We know God is not different from his word. And there is nothing that exists that wasn't created by God. Now, if we also look at the book of 1 John 1 to 3, 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, I read verses 1 and 1 to 3. 1 John, or not 1 John, rather, forgive me, the book of John, rather. <laughs> book of John chapter 1, 1 to 3. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. Let's stop there. Is there any ambiguity in this statement? Do you, need a, do you need to be a theologian to understand this statement? Do you need a college degree to understand this statement? This statement is plain, is simple. Even a child knows can interpret this. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Plainly. Now, tell me, how then do some of these Christian sects arrive that Jesus is not God? Satan. Even in plain sight, even in their own hands, even looking at this truth, plainly stated, not even like in ambiguous terms, clearly stated. Yet, they say, no, not God, he's just the son of God. And we tell you that Satan is in this business. Now, he said, the same was in the beginning with God, means he was not created. That means the world was in the beginning with God. I said earlier, my word was in the beginning with me when I was created, when I was born. It didn't, I didn't create my word as I went on in life. No, it's already there in me. So, in this, the same was in the beginning with God, which was not created, has been, has been in all eternity. It's only God that had dwelled in all eternity. Anything else was created. The angels, every other was created. So, in the beginning, he was with God, and all things were made by him, and without him, was not anything made that was made. And we know that God created the world. And if he's saying that the word created the world from the beginning, without the word, nothing was made, it's very clear that Jesus is God. Isaiah, then we wonder, why then the Son of God? Oh, why then the Son of God? Why is he then the Son of God? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. He says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, listen, Mighty God. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. And the, the everlasting father, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Now, the Bible says, unto us a child is born and a son. For God so loved the word, um, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son. Why a son? Because God came in this world and took the form of a human being. And for you to come into this world, God followed the natural course in this world. You have to be a child of somebody. And there is no man involved. We all know, even the Quran states it, that Jesus was born of a virgin Mary. This is a virgin. So there was no man involved. So all these things are very clear everywhere for anybody who wants to live. So, it says, and Jesus, the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and she conceived a child by the power of the Holy Spirit, by God himself, and gave birth to a son. Now, who is that son going to be called? Is he the son of Joseph? Joseph did not give birth to that child. 
Mary, I mean, there is no man involved in this matter. Because men, children are owned by their parents, by their, men, by their fathers. Is this always answer your father's name? You bear your father's name. Children are taking take the genealogy of their father. So now you cannot say he's the father of son of Joseph. Joseph did not give birth to him. He's not the son of Joseph. That's comes the son of God. This is the son of God. In the beginning, he was not the son. He was the word. He was God himself. The son of God was just for redemptive purpose, only for a matter of redemption here on earth. Because of our salvation. He's coming into this world and bearing that title, son of God, son of man. Because he was now in the nature of man. That's just a redemptive title. At the end, he's not going to answer that name. We in heaven, he is not the son of God. In heaven, he is not Jesus. He is God himself. Worshipped by angels and humans and earth saints. He is the almighty God, the creator. So, that is how the son came in. Because his son was given to us by God. Not because... God had a, a son from the beginning. Because Jesus came here as man. Let us also look at the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 11. 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 11. And it says, For what man knoweth the things of this man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So we say that what man knows, and who can tell you better except your spirits? Because you are one, he's with you everywhere. Every thought you think, he knows. He can tell, he can expose everything about you. And he said, who else can tell anything about God except the Spirit of God? And we all know that Jesus is the Spirit of God, even across all nations. And the Spirit of God is who? Is God. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Who was manifested in the flesh? God. God was manifested in the flesh. Jesus coming in the flesh is God coming in the flesh. For what, for what reason? To give us eternal life. Or we be saved. Philippians 2. Verses 6 to 7. Philippians 2, 6 to 7. It says, Who, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. He's speaking about Jesus. Jesus being in the form of God, because the nature of God, the spirit, soul, and body was in the form of God, he was God. He said, Taught it not robbery, being equal with God. Which is clearly stated everywhere that he is God. But he did what? But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of man. You see how the Son came? The Son of God, Jesus came. God coming in the form of a servant to serve on earth here. To be in the likeness of man. So that we may be saved. So that he may destroy the work that Satan has done in the beginning. Through Adam. So, he was God. Equal with God. But came in the form of a servant. In the form of man. For our redemption. Let us also look at the book of Luke 23. Luke 23, I read 39 to 43. Luke 23, 39 to 43. And one of the manifestors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou art Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation with, well, with that are in the same condemnation now. This is when Jesus was hanging on the cross. There were two thieves hanging beside him. And one railed, reviled Jesus, cursed and said, what is it? If you're Christ, if you say you're Christ, and you're the Savior, why don't you save yourself and save us here? And the other one of the people said, are you not afraid of God? 
Revelation, what is he telling? Just like when Jesus asked Peter, who do you think I am? He said, you are this Christ, the son of the living God. The man was being revealed, understood that this is God hanging on the cross. Are you not afraid of God? God is hanging on the cross with you, with the same condemnation? And you're not afraid of God? The man, by inspiration, by revelation, could understand that God was hanging on the cross. He said, are you not afraid of God? Now, listen for you to understand what I'm saying here. Verse 41, he said, And we indeed justly for what we received do reward for our sorry for all we receive here yeah? we receive do um we receive the due reward of our deeds but this man had done nothing now verse 22 and he said unto jesus lord he called him lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom a man hanging on the cross that was dying does any man have a kingdom outside this earth you see that the man recognized that the man hanging on the cross was god and has the ability to save him even outside this cross. So remember me when thou enter into thy kingdom. And what did Jesus say? And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, unto thee, Today thou shalt thou be with me in paradise. And Jesus assured him, Does any man have a kingdom outside this earth? Can any man give a man any kingdom outside life here on earth? But Jesus assured him and told him, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Proving to you in every sense that Jesus is God our creator. Also, we can see that in John chapter 20, book of John, chapter 20, I read 28 to 29. John 20, I read 28 to 29. And it says, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, as in capital, as in God, and my God. This was when after Jesus died and resurrected and came to where the disciples were, were, were assembled because Thomas did not believe. And Jesus showed him the wounds and showed him everything. And he said, when he put his hand, I was assured now that it is God. He said, my Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. Jesus did not rebuke him. Why are you calling me God? When John was being given the revelation in the book of Revelation, when the angel that appeared to John, appeared to John, John fell on him. John said, no, 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 don't do that. I'm a fellow serpent like you. Don't worship me. Jesus did not rebuke him. He called him my Lord and my God. He didn't say, no, don't, don't call me that. Fully admitting that he is his Lord and God. Very clearly. And some Muslims, the, the guy, show me where Jesus said that he is God. This is one of them. He was called. You called me Cliff. And I didn't say, no, Cliff is not my name. What does that mean? I'm telling you that my name is Cliff. I'm accepting that my name is Cliff. He called him Lord and God. And Jesus said, don't call, didn't say, don't call me God. Don't call me Lord. What is Jesus saying? I am telling you that I am God. I'm accepting what you're calling me. I am God. And he even went further to say, is it because you have seen that you have been that I'm Lord and God? What else do we want? What else do you want? Satan is in that business. My prayer is that your the skills in our eyes be broken and will be redeemed from Satan in the name of Jesus. Amen. Also, if you look at the book of Psalms, verse 45, let me read with this. Psalm, verse 45, chapter 45, rather, verses 6 and 7. David, being filled with the Holy Ghost, was speaking of Jesus before ever he was born. And from the time of David to the time of Jesus should be maybe... Um, uh, I can't really figure out, but at least about a thousand years. Should be about a thousand years before Jesus was born. From the time of David to Jesus should be about a thousand years. Moses about fifteen hundred years. Yes, David should be about a thousand years before Jesus actually came on this earth. Now let us see what David, as he was led by the Spirit, says about Jesus. Matthew chapter forty-five. Sorry, Psalm forty-five. Yeah, thank you for paying attention. Psalm forty-five, six to seven. It says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of the king, thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Now, Jesus was speaking about a God here, right? Now he said, 
thy throne, O God. He was talking about God. Is forever and ever the scepter of your kingdom, the scepter of what? Righteousness. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, oh God is anointing God again. Therefore, God, thy God. So he's talking about God. Are there two gods? He's saying that God, your throne is forever. Because you love righteousness. Therefore, God has anointed you, thy own God. God has, that means God has God again. Is that what he's saying? Say God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above what? Your fellows. Why fellows? He's talking about Jesus in human form. When he came here, because he now he became his fellows. He said, You are God. He was very much as God. Therefore, God in heaven. He took the form of someone and obeyed the natural course of men. That's why when Jesus walked here, though he was fully God, but he did not operate in the power of God. He operated as a man filled, filled with the Holy Ghost. Just like many of us are today. That's why he said, As many that believe in him will do greater works than he did. Because you operate in the same power he operated, filled with the Holy Ghost. He's laid down his power and his authority as God. That's why he said, the Bible we read earlier said that, didn't call it robbery, being equal to God, to be made of no reputation, to become like ordinary men. So David was talking about the God-man. God has come down to be like a fellow man, to be like human beings. He said, you love righteousness. The center of your kingdom is, for, is that of righteousness. And then because of that, God, that's why Jesus, throughout he was here on earth, prayed to God. Thy God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Now, to better understand this, you come to the New Testament, you see the writer of Hebrew explaining this scripture very well for us to understand. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. Chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. It says, but unto the Son, now is this making more clearer, but unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, that is the Son, he's calling O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou loved righteousness and had hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Thy fellow here because he became the son of man. He came in the nature of man. So he has fellows like us. And if we Look, look further, or if we, if we go um, from verse 6, let's, let me read that story from verse 6. Hebrews, or let me read from verse 6. He said, and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let the angels of God worship him. And you know he was talking about here. Now, I told you earlier, when John was using Revelation, when the angel, when he tried to worship, he said, don't worship me. That means the angels worship him. Some people, have heard somebody also, a so-called Christian also, Saying that Jesus is angel, not God. But here, the Bible is telling you that the angels worshipped him. He's not angel. The angels are also shocked. They worship him. And only God can be worshipped. Yes! Even at birth, the angels worshipped him. Even at birth, the three wise men came and worshipped him. Only God can be worshipped. He said here, the angels of God worshipped him. And, and of the angels, he said... Who naked his angels' spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? Then, if you come to verse 10 to 11, he says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. Talking about Jesus in human sin. You are Lord who have laid the foundation from the beginning of the earth, and the heavens are in your what? In your hands. In verse 11, they shall perish, but thou remainest, and all, so, and they, and thou, so, thou remainest. And they all shall wax old as dot a garment, and as a vest, as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Talking about God, still refrain. You are the one who created the whole earth. The earth will pass away. Your creation will pass away. Everything you pass, you create will melt away. But God, you will not change. Jesus, you are still remain the same. You will, will the earth pass away? You will still remain God for all eternity. He's still God. So, there is, no, there is no lack, like I said earlier, beginning, there is no lack of evidence that Jesus is God. It's just the suppressing, the suppression of it from people who are insincere, people who don't want truth, people who don't want to be saved, people who Satan has clouded their hearts of understanding. And they can't perceive even a clear truth that is in their plain sight. Now, Jesus is the life giver. He is the life himself 
and the giver of eternal life. Remember when we were describing with Jesus, we say that Jesus is the living God. He is the living word of God, the creator of the earth and the giver of eternal life. So now let's look at that. Jesus is life and he is the giver of eternal life. The book of John chapter 14 verse 6. John 14 verse 6. He says, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, I always tell people, especially my Muslim friends, I have a lot of them, this statement is either true or false. Do you want to risk this statement being truth in the last day? This statement is either true or it's false. It's either God is wrong, he's a liar, this is not true. Because today, everybody says the pl uh, pluralism. The pl every road leads to God. You're coming from this way, I'm coming from this way. You know, doctrine of demons. So the Hindus, they are coming there from that side, like one man and the internet, they call that the feast. Say that if we case the Muslims, we get to heaven before the Christians. Ignorant people. If Jesus is God, your creator, and he said, no one comes to that place except by me. I am the way to that place. I am the truth and the life, except by me. An absolute statement that does not give you any room for any other option. Except by me. An absolute statement. Your God, creator, is either wrong and you are right. And that's why Satan is doing everything to make people to know that or to disbelieve or to misunderstand who Jesus is. To make them to know or believe that Jesus is not God. Because if you know he's God, and this is what your creator has said, God, who will decide your fate at the end when you die, when you stand before him. And he said, except by me, there is no other road. Wouldn't you follow this? My prayer is that everyone who is hearing my voice or who will ever listen to this message will know that this statement is truth. And if this statement is truth, what will be your position in the last day if you go contrary to what this statement has said? Hebrews, or no, John, John 3. I will, I will close about Jesus with that. John chapter 3, verse 36. John chapter 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall, see, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide on him. You see the judgment is finished. He that believe on the Son, like I told you, the Son title, the Son purpose is for the purpose of redemption. It's a purpose that you be saved, that you be saved from your sin. So I said, he that believes on the Son who hung on the cross, I died in your place, I died in your stead, I took your death, I took your punishment, I died for you on the cross as God, your creator. I came in the likeness of flesh and I died on the cross for you. I came as a son and I perished for your sake on the earth. On earth here. He said, He that believes in me, in that shall have everlasting life. He said, but he that does not believe, he said, is damned forever. The wrath of God, the judgment of God is already upon that person. There is no other judgment for you. John is finished already. We're not even talking about your righteousness. Why you do that? We're not talking about that. You can be the best man on earth here. Do the best good on earth here. As long as you have failed to accept the salvation that Jesus has paid on the cross of Calvary for you, you're doomed forever. That's what this is saying. My prayer is that tonight, everyone here who has not believed will believe. Everyone who will hear this who has not believed will believe and give their life to Jesus and be saved in the name of Jesus. Amen. So this has given us a very clear understanding of who Jesus is. For anyone who really wants truth, for anyone who really wants to be saved, there is no ambiguity in the statement that we have been made here.